Tara McCleary Reeves and Amanda Jenkins formed a very special friendship in 2007, the year Reeves' six-year-old son was diagnosed with leukemia. The pair were inspired to create the Nightlight Chronicles, a scripture adventure series written to equip parents and children to depend on the Lord at all times. They recently released their second book in the series titled The Pirate and the Firefly, which tells the story of a boy, a bug, and a lesson in wisdom. We are joined by author and mother Tara McCleary Reeves right now. Thank you, Tara. So good to have you here. It's such a blessing to be here. Thank well, you. I, and I enjoyed your book, both of them. I got to read both of them, and I enjoyed them so much. But before we really get into the book, I think it's important for our viewers to kind of get a background sure. in where your inspiration came from. And well, that was in 2007. Absolutely. Actually, the inspiration for this project probably came as I was growing up in a home with a mom and dad that were very intentional parents. Mm and used God's Word daily in our home. One thing my dad did every morning was go to Psalms and Proverbs. We would read five chapters of Psalms a day mm. in one chapter of Proverbs, which would really take us through the entire Psalms and Proverbs by the end of the month. And we would read God's Word. It was implemented, but not just implemented, it was applied in every aspect of my growing up years. And I'm so grateful for parents that did that. In 2005, I wrote the outline for a series and put it in a, it really put it in um, a file when in 2007, our son was diagnosed with leukemia. Mm. But each one in the series was based on a different Psalm in scripture because God's Word is truth. And I wanted to encourage children to apply God's word to every felt need that they were going through. The right. first uh, talks about uh, fear, and it's based on Psalm 91. The second talks about wisdom, and it's based on my favorite Psalm, which is Psalm 1. In 2007, our son was diagnosed with leukemia, and my focus and my passion just directed inward to our two twins, Caroline and Daniel, and really getting our son well. Well, tell me about that time. Tell me about when you found out, kind of what was yes. going on? What were your son's symptoms and what, what was happening? Absolutely. Daniel is an athlete mm -hmm. and he was in T-ball. I had gone to speak at a women's conference in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and on the way home I called to check in and my husband said our son Daniel was really not feeling well mm -hmm. that night. When I got home, I took him to the hospital, to our Lake Norman Regional Medical Hospital, and he had just been having leg pains and they thought that perhaps he had Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever mm. and they gave him some antibiotic. I tell moms now always request a CBC which is a complete blood count which enables the doctors to really pinpoint how the white blood cell count right. might be at the time. I don't fault, fault them that night because it was really in the wee hours of the morning mm. and about two days later he seemed asymptomatic and I was in the car as the Lord would have it. I was going to the bookstore to purchase two copies of Dr. Dobson's book, When God Doesn't Make Sense, for two friends who had just recently been diagnosed with breast cancer. The Lord had me in the car at the exact moment when Dr. Dobson on his uh, radio broadcast was interviewing a father whose son, 16 years old, had been diagnosed with leukemia. Wow. And Dr. Dobson asked him the same question you asked me. He said, Dr. Dobson asked the man, tell me, what was your son's symptoms? And they were the same symptoms that and it Daniel was had. And it was leg pain. And I don't want to alarm moms to all of a sudden think that if their child's having a growing pain that they need to rush them sure, to the emergency room. Sure, but it's important that you pay attention to those symptoms. Exactly. And mm. so we did that night. His pain recurred with fever that night. Mm. And I looked over at my husband. I said, I really think the Lord may be preparing us for something. And we took Daniel, I, I did that morning, Lee stayed with his twin sister, Caroline, and we prayed before I left that the Lord would just absolutely give us the strength for whatever was ahead. And he was diagnosed with leukemia that morning. And what was, how was your faith during that? When you found, when you heard this diagnosis, I mean, that just had to, I mean, that hurt, that hurt you. Did oh, well, absolutely. It, how did it affect your faith? Well, thankfully, um, I had prayed to receive Christ at five years old, and I had a very strong and, and have a very strong foundation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Dr. Jeremiah, David Jeremiah, mm -hmm. said something years ago. He said, God never allows suffering without a purpose. So and I'll never forget that night in the hospital, and I could literally wring the pillow with tears that were falling, and I was trying to muffle them because our son was in the bed next to me, and I didn't want him to hear me cry. And a nurse came in, and she patted me on the back, and she said, Honey, isn't it wonderful that 
God will never give us more than we can bear. And I said, you know, that verse in 1 Corinthians, that's not exactly what it says. It says that God will never allow us a temptation bigger than we can bear. And this trial is much bigger than I can bear, mm. but it's not too big for him. And he's allowed it for me to have a greater dependency on him. And so I focus not on the why as much as the who. Mm. And I'm grateful looking back uh, for the opportunity to see his, his sovereign hand over every detail of life. And as we journeyed this together, my husband and I, with our twins, I kept a journal, a Caring Bridge journal. That's right, you kept a journal. And that is how you met Amanda Jenkins. Uh, actually, Amanda and I had met once before. She is okay. an amazing girl, amazing. She married da Dallas Jenkins, who is a film producer. They live in Chicago, Illinois. Amanda is a talented author and has written a book called Confessions of a Raging Perfectionist, which is phenomenal. <laughs> we all need to read that. <laughs> as, I was, as I was keeping this journal, I was really doing it more for my children because I knew I, they were too young at the time for me to really get into all the details of what was going on in Daniel's diagnosis at the time. I didn't want to scare them. Uh, actually, we were told at the hospital not to tell Daniel that he had cancer, but to tell him that his blood was sick and that God has given doctors the ability to, um, to treat some of the, um, the sickness that he had so as not to create fear in them. But my husband encouraged me to keep this journal and in every entry, I would quote a passage of scripture because the power was not in my words, but in the power of How the living you able action. How so positive during this time? I mean, I know there are mothers out there who are probably, and fathers who are experiencing the same thing. So how are you able to not blame God? Well, it's not a positive thing. I think you, you have motivational speakers that temporarily make you feel really good about, you know, yourself or your circumstances. But inspiration means God breathed. Mm -hmm. It's God breathed. And I think he gave me the ability because I was in his word, abiding in his word every single day. The first verse, actually, Psalm 119, 68. Um, if you look in my Bible, I have it, um, yeah. Psalm 119, 68. I have it marked April 30th, 2007, which was the date of Daniel's diagnosis. And it says, you are good and what you do is good. God didn't, uh, God, God didn't cause my son's cancer. We live in a fallen world that is sin sick, not because of God's choice, but because of ours, mm -hmm. because of what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. So sin was our choice. And because of that, we have sickness in this world. We have a fallen world that's filled with hurt, that's filled with trial, that's filled with suffering and turmoil. But the fact is, that God allows things to draw us closer to Him. And when we are just strengthened in that fact every single day, that as I quoted earlier, Dr. Jeremiah, God never allows suffering without a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's to know Him more intimately and to know Him more completely. Mm -hmm. And as I kept that journal, Amanda was so encouraging. Uh, we had met once before and she reached out to me and um, there were several devotionals that, that I had written that she really enjoyed and we would pray together for Daniel's healing. And I asked my husband, because years ago I had done this outline for this book series and I saw her creativity and I saw her passion mm -hmm. for really getting our children into God's Word in a creative way. Well, tell us, I, I want to get into these books before we run out of time because this is the, the most recent one that you did. That is, that's the so first So tell us about series. this book and, yes. and really the purpose behind them for kids. Absolutely. Well, each one, Amanda and I are both very uh, intentional parents because mm -hmm. we were raised with intentional parents. We had parents that modeled um, a mom and dad that really just brought Christ into every aspect of our homes. I remember when my mother would, would put me in the car and we'd put our seatbelts on, we would pray for traveling mercies to get to where we were going. But she completed the cycle that when we got there, we actually thank the Lord for getting us there safely. And Amanda has that same heart for getting our children into scripture. And so the neat thing about this series is each book has an entire passage of scripture in it. Mm -hmm. So we are actually encouraging the children to read God's word and to apply it to whatever. Now this, uh, the latest, The Pirate and the Firefly, Oliver has made some unwise friend choices. And so he is navigating through those choices and Phineas the Firefly directs him to God's Word. Now, I will say, and I'm so thankful for Dan Lynch at Lifeway 
uh, publishing. Mm -hmm. And when we first pitched the idea to him, Dan called me back one day and he said, you know, Lifeway's having a hard time with the fact that you have a talking animal, a talking firefly. And I said, well, y'all just pray about it, but I want you to go to the book of Kings and read about Balaam's donkey because God allowed him to talk too, so. <laughs> well, you have so many facets of your story. Um, we love your books. And really quickly, this is a painting that your daughter drew Caroline. when Daniel finished his chemotherapy. He finished his treatment on July 28th, 2010. And as a mom, parenting twins especially, you do not want to foster competitiveness or mm -hmm. competition with them. And to really look and see how God has wired each child differently. Right. And he's given both of them an incredible gift in art. And Caroline, one day, uh, she and her art teacher, Becky Gleason, were downstairs. And this is actually on a gift box, which right. the Lord allowed to be so perfectly appointed. And we had been studying. I was homeschooling the children through Daniel's treatment. And we'd be, we had uh, studied Isaiah 61, 3, and it says to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Well, it is evident and just in this see. painting that you did such a great job with intentional parenting for oh, Caroline and Daniel and Harrison. And we just appreciate you sharing these book with, books with us. You can pick up these books on our e-store. Check them out right now. They're great books for parents out there.